Good morning and welcome everybody. Morning. So have you heard, I'm Carrie Harrington with the Nevada Cancer Coalition. We are here to talk about access and collaboration. Um, while access to health care is an issue for communities across our nation, here in Nevada, our communities and our patients face some very unique challenges. At the Cancer Coalition, we bring together stakeholders from across the state to collaborate on many of these issues and barriers. We work to increase access to prevention, detection, treatment, and care. And it's really conversations like these where we come up with some unique solutions and start to partner on many of these issues. So on that note, um, I would love to welcome to our panelists today, Murdo and Dr. Semlowski. Thank you. Good to be here. Thanks. All right. So can you begin by telling us why it's important to have access to cancer research and care within a local community? So the uh, current um, uh, rate of uh, research progression in cancer is uh, very dramatic. This, the last 10 years has been night and day different than the preceding 20. And I think the number of new uh, drugs that are coming online each year is stunning. And the changes in, in practice are uh, uh, quite dramatic. And I think the difficulty is for uh, physicians to stay up with the uh, change in knowledge and then also uh, to provide um, cutting edge care to their patients, and so I think this is a big, big battle. Yeah, I mean, I would echo Dr. Somlowski's remarks. We're in a rapidly evolving pace of change in cancer care, and as good as Bristol Myers Squibb is at developing, discovering, and developing medicines and working with academic cancer centers around the world, we uh, we know that our innovations are only as good as the system that we launch them into and we have to work with the, the stakeholders throughout the community of cancer care to help them uh, understand what it is that we're bringing to the market but also sometimes there are complicated um, biomarker tests and diagnostics that travel with these innovations so there's a lot of complexity there and we have to work very hard to simplify that and also to partner with the organizations of the community, which is one of the reasons we're really pleased to underwrite the, the Atlantic series. Thank you. Dr. Samlowski, to you as a local oncologist, um, what do you see as some of the biggest barriers to cancer care in Nevada? So uh, fundamentally, Nevada is uh, two major urban areas and a bunch of open space. And so the distance that patients have to travel from uh, rural towns is uh, very large and can be an impediment to care uh, that they can't receive locally. Um, I think in addition, other barriers are uh, the uh, uh, current uh, um, the ability of physicians to stay up and provide uh, um, cutting edge care, but also uh, the uh, resistance by uh, insurance payers to uh, pay for some of these expensive medications and uh, to try to uh, uh, get that funded when patients need it. Um, and finally, there's significant fragmentation of care in Las Vegas because there's significant medical talent that's come here over the years, but you have to be able to pick it out of the, the crowd and, uh, and be able to find the people that are best suited to working on a specific problem uh, or disease. Good point. In your practice here in Las Vegas, have you come upon a time where you've been able to overcome any of these barriers for a patient? So what we've done in my practice, because I'm focused on skin cancer and melanoma, uh, we've put together a working group of uh, uh, surgeons that are interested, uh, dermatologists, pathology doctors, radiation therapists, that we meet once a month to discuss uh, what we call multidisciplinary care uh, uh, when multiple uh, types of treatment are needed by different specialists. And this way we kind of coordinate on patients uh, that have difficult problems. That's fantastic and probably extremely helpful to some of our patients in rural areas as well um, to have that collaboration here in town. I think it makes a big difference in terms of uh, knowing the people that are interested and have the qualifications to work on a problem and being able to uh, uh, 
put that in place for a given patient. That's a, a big plus. Absolutely. All right, Murdo, question for you. Um, tell us about uh, Bristol Myers' role in research across the country and what you're working on with local communities. Yeah, so I, I'm, again, I'm really excited about the work that we've been able to do at the major cancer centers across the country, and we've invested significantly in expanding a field of research called immuno-oncology, where we mm -hmm. help um, the patient's own immune system see and attack their cancer rather than directly attack, attack uh, tumor cells. And while that work at those academic centers is really important, we also have to make sure that um, the community oncologist who treats a broad section of types of cancer where 80% of uh, US um, residents go for their cancer care, we have to make sure that we also invest in research in the community setting. And Bristol Myers has made large investments over the last four years in uh, forming a network of um, community oncologists called the IO ICON network. And we have centers here in Nevada and we uh, conduct early stage clinical trials and late stage clinical trials on new mechanisms and new treatments. We also partner with these networks to co-create educational materials mm -hmm. for other oncologists. And we do it also to create educational materials for patients so that they understand the types of treatments that they're getting, that the side effects could be different than perhaps chemotherapies and older drugs that they've been taking. And uh, I think beyond that, even working with other stakeholders, we've mentioned payers and insurers, we've mentioned uh, state government and, and federal uh, government to make sure that we're, we're improving that ecosystem of care beyond just launching a drug into it. Absolutely, you've mentioned some key partners in this quest. Um, final question to both of you, what do you see as some of the key factors to increasing access to cancer research and care within local communities? So I think one of the uh, barriers that I face every day is um, insurance plans have negotiated contracts with different groups of physicians, and I think that uh, in some cases that means you can't see the the person in town that's best suited for your disease. Um, and so uh, kind of uh, leveling the playing field and making sure that patients have access from an insurance standpoint is important. Also uh, trying to provide uh, uh, education to physicians uh, and bring them up to speed in terms of the current treatments. I spend a lot of uh, time trying to stay up to date uh, uh, in my field uh, because there's a uh, um, the, the information comes out of big national or international meetings, and uh, uh, a recent meeting in Europe it was going to be practice changing in terms of uh, things that uh, were discussed at that meeting. So I think that this trying to stay up and educate other people, and I spend time uh, lecturing community physicians about community oncologists about uh, uh, the IO area, the immuno oncology area, because uh, it's unique in terms of both effectiveness and side effects uh, and side effect management. So it's important for people to become educated. Absolutely. Yeah, whatever we can do to support uh, clinicians like Dr. Samlowski in that endeavor is really important as well. Um, we have a large organization at Bristol Myers Squibb that helps clinicians and their practices deal with the complexities of reimbursement. Um, so we've got a, a large team of professionals that do that. But, you know, first and foremost, we are making strides in the science of cancer. We're discovering new ways to target and eradicate that cancer through the immune system as the latest breakthrough. And while we're extremely motivated in the company every time we meet patients who have been in our clinical trials or have received one of our treatments and they're alive today and doing well, we also recognize there are many, many patients that we haven't supported yet and we haven't helped. And that's as motivational inside our company to be even more focused, to work even harder, to be even more creative in our science and to make sure that we don't leave patients behind when we launch those innovations in the market. So there's a large scale effort, these dialogues and building awareness of the challenges for patients navigating their cancer care are really important. Um, we have a large philanthropic effort, was mentioned this morning, the ECHO program, which is a relatively local program here. Um, we, are, we are absolutely focused on being a uh, positive contributor to improving that quality of care beyond just launching great treatments into it. 
Fantastic, and it, again, it's through partnerships with Bristol Myers Squibb and comprehensive cancer centers and some of our fantastic physicians, Dr. Simlowski. Um, it's definitely one in our state. It's really through these partnerships and these dialogues where we are going to make a difference. Um, thank you to Bristol Myers Squibb also for providing my travel so I could join you all from Reno. And again, thank you for this fantastic dialogue and for being here, gentlemen. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Thank you.